This view shows a 360-degree panorama of the Avanavero drill site. In the center of the panorama is a gap between two hills. Beyond it is a layered sulfate-bearing region which represents a drier, saltier era in the history of Mount Sharp, the three-mile-tall mountain the rover has been ascending since 2014. At this location, Curiosity used the drill on its robotic arm to collect rock samples for analysis by laboratory instruments inside the vehicle.
This image taken by Mars Global Surveyor shows an orbital view of the north polar region of Mars. The ice-rich polar cap, the quasi-circular white area at center, is approximately 621 miles across. The white cap is riven with dark spiral-shaped bands which are deep troughs that are in shadow. They do not reflect sunlight as well or have more internal layers exposed. To the right of center, a large canyon called Chasma Boreal almost bisects the ice cap. The canyon is about the length of the famous Grand Canyon and up to 1.2 miles deep. New findings from the shallow radar instrument aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter have revealed subsurface geology in this region, allowing scientists to reconstruct the formation process of the large chasm and spiral troughs. This view shows a promontory on the rim of Victoria Crater. The small crater in the right foreground known as Sputnik is about 65 feet away from the rover. The tip of the spectacular layered promontory itself is about 650 feet away from the rover and the exposed rock layers are about 50 feet tall. This is Marathon Valley, which opens northeastward to a view across the floor of Endeavour Crater in this view from the panoramic camera of Mars rover. The high point in the right half of the scene is Nudson Ridge, which forms part of the southern edge of Marathon Valley. Portions of the northeastern and eastern rim of Endeavour Crater appear on the distant horizon. Endeavour Crater is 14 miles in diameter and the fractured texture of Marathon Valley's floor is visible in the foreground.
Curiosity has traveled many miles on Mars to date, many of them across rugged, rocky terrain. The rough landscape of Mars has therefore taken some substantial bites out of the rover's six aluminum wheels. The damage looks dramatic here, but the rover should be able to keep traveling along for a while. The rover's wheels started showing signs of wear and tear relatively early in the mission, prompting scientists to take some mitigation measures, picking routes across gentler terrain when possible for example, and eventually beaming up traction control software that adjusts Curiosity's speed depending on the type of ground it's traversing. Curiosity's wheel wear experience also helped shape the design of NASA's next Mars rover Perseverance, which touched down on the floor of the Zero Crater in February 2021. For example, Perseverance's wheels are slightly larger in diameter and have twice as many treads as those of Curiosity. In addition, the life hunting, sample caching Perseverance's treads are gently curved instead of chevron shaped. They also don't spell out JPL in Morse code on the red dirt as the rover drives like those of Curiosity were designed to do. This view shows an example of cross bedding that results from water passing over a loose bed of sediment. The cross bedding, evident as layers at angles to each other, reflects formation and passage of waves of sand one on top of the other. These are known as ripples or dunes. The direction of migration of these small ripples and dunes was toward the southeast. That direction is toward Mount Sharp away from the area where Curiosity found evidence of delta deposits where a stream entered a lake. The directional flows recorded in the sediments are interpreted to have formed by currents moving down the deltas and into deeper lake water. Curiosity rover captured this panorama while parked below Geddes Valley Ridge. After three attempts over the course of three years, the rover finally reached the ridge on its fourth try of the mission. The ridge was one of the last features to form on Mount Sharp that Curiosity has been ascending since 2014. The ridge preserves a record of one of the last wet periods seen on this part of Mars. Reaching the ridge was no easy feat, as previous forays were hindered by knife-edged gatherback rocks and very steep slopes. Arriving after one of the most difficult climbs the mission has ever faced, Curiosity spent 11 days at the ridge. It then departed to ascend higher up the mountain where the rover investigated Geddes Valley's channel through which water flowed some 3 billion years ago carrying rocks and debris that piled up to form the ridge.
Dunes of sand-sized materials have been trapped on the floors of many Martian craters. This here is one such example from a crater in Noakis Terra. The dunes here are linear, thought to be due to shifting wind directions. In places, each dune is remarkably similar to adjacent dunes including a reddish dust-colored band on northeast facing slopes. Large angular boulders also litter the floor between the dunes. The most extensive linear dune fields known in the solar system are on Saturn's large moon Titan. But Titan has a very different environment and composition, so at meter scale resolution they probably are very different from Martian dunes. Curiosity rover took this image when it was overlooking a shallow depression called Yellowknife Bay, which is in the left third of this image in the middle distance. Yellowknife Bay is a 5 meter geologic depression located in the large impact crater known as Gale Crater. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter has observed morphological features created by the presence of liquid water at this site, suggesting the presence of an ancient lake which could have sustained microbial life. 